Hey, how's it going, Dewey Sulfurs? Got a good one for you today. Today we're gonna to go over why an advanced scanner is crucial when you're trying to diagnose performance issues on modern cars. And the scanner we're gonna be reviewing today is it's gonna be this Autel Maxidos scanner. All right, now before we actually go any further, I'm gonna clarify something. I'm not being paid to do this review. This wasn't sent to me by Autel. I had to pay for this myself and fork out the money, but I was able to get a really good deal on this. In fact, I'm pretty sure I was able to get this for the cheapest possible price you can get it anywhere. I'll put a link to where I got this from down in the description box. You can click on it and check it out. Also, if you have compatibility questions, wanna know whether this is gonna be compatible with your car or not. Uh, we're gonna go through some of that in a little while, but if you have more specific questions, I wanna make sure it can do a certain function. Again, I suggest you ask the seller himself by clicking in the link in the description box. So first we'll do a quick peek and see what comes included with this kit. So here's a look at the scanner itself. So up top, here's your power button. Here's where an ethernet cable can connect to. Here's one for an USB, and here's where your power source connects to. Of course, here's where your main cable connects to, which then you'll attach different adapters to the other end and connect to different car makes and models. And here's a look at the bottom of this thing. This is where your SD memory card goes. And here in the rear, you have this little prop that will definitely come in handy. And of course, this is a touch screen, and your stylus goes right back in here. Now this thing is Wi-Fi capable and you can connect it to your uh, computer or network at your shop or your garage. But just so you know, the connection speed is pitifully slow. All right, so here's a quick rundown of all the different adapters this comes with. Here we got two more, this is the Chrysler one and here's another one for Mercedes. But between all these adapters, the main one you're gonna use is gonna be this OBD 16 pin connector. As you can see, I've already attached to our cable. All right, so let's see what we got in here. We got some more adapters, looks like for Fiat and Audi. Here's our power adapter. And yes, that's something else you should know. This scanner does not have a battery. The only way you can power this on is when it's connected to the car or through this adapter or this adapter that you can use to connect to your car's battery or the cigarette lighter. All right, so it comes with an ethernet cable as well. And here's your user manual and your update application software. Speaking of updates, when you purchase one of these, you're gonna get one year worth of free updates. Now, out of the box, this is gonna come with some software already installed, but it's not gonna be the latest. So you wanna do an update right away. But again, the problem is the Wi-Fi connection is super slow. So what you wanna do is actually install this update application on your computer. Next, register your scanner through Autel's website. Then remove this SD card from your scanner and using this SD memory card reader, connect it to your computer. And once this is installed and you've registered your scanner, you can use this application updater that comes with this CD-ROM to update your software for your scanner. And since you're gonna be using your computer's internet connection, things are gonna go a lot faster. All right, so next let's cover some of the capabilities of this advanced scanner. As you can see, I got this scanner already attached to our car's data link connector. By the way, if you're wondering, this cable is gonna be about five feet long. So I just turned on the scanner by pressing on this power button, and it usually takes about a minute for it to boot up. All right, so here's a look at our starting page. We'll start at this first tab for Asian cars. Here's a list of the cars the scanner covers. And you also obviously have the option of going through the generic OBD2 interface as well. Here's a look at the Europeans. As you can see, it's quite extensive. I'll scroll down for you. And the domestics, you get the three main ones as you would expect. Here's a look at the data manager tab. I haven't messed with this yet, so I'm not too familiar with it. Uh, we won't bother with the updates. We know what that's about. Here's setup. Here are your options. You got your Wi-Fi and network options. Here's the beep one. You can turn this on and it's gonna sound like this. So we'll just turn that off since it's kinda of annoying. Come on. All right, so let's go back to the domestics and try to get inside the Ford interface. So to start off, we got two options and I should mention that going forward, things are not gonna be exactly the same for every car and year make and model. Things are gonna be different depending on whatever software that this uh, Autel scanner has installed. But you should be able to use all the major functions that you would expect. So here we'll just uh, start with the uh, new session. It's asking us about the vehicle specification. That's all correct. It's asking us whether this VIN number is correct. We'll just hit yes for now. All right, so we got three options now. We got an auto scan, which basically scans all the control modules on your car. Option two is a control unit. We basically, when you choose this, you can choose which control module you wanna scan. Third one is just vehicle information. We won't bother with that. So let's go to option two. And here you can see all the different modules that are available 
to the scanner. Here you get your ABS, general electronic module, your anti-theft, restraint control module, or your airbag con control module, your uh, instrument cluster, and the main one, your power control module. So right there, that's the first huge advantage this scanner has over your generic OBD2 scanners out there. The control modules that this thing can cover, like the ABS, your airbag, and all the other modules, if you were to get a generic scanner, you would have to maybe get a make, make a model specific scanner. So you would have to buy a scanner that can read ABS codes for let's say just a, you know, like a GM made product. Then that may not be able to read the airbag codes or maybe you need to get the codes off for a different card and you would have to buy a different or separate scanner. And of course, forget about all the different modules this thing covers. None of those scanners are gonna be able to cover your instrument cluster module, for example. Or a very important one that will save you a lot of hassle, your HVAC module. Let's say if you have a problem with your AC or your heater is not working, if you have a scanner that's capable of scanning that module, you're gonna be able to save a lot of time and money. All right, so in this video, we're not gonna have enough time to go through every module, but we'll just stick to the most common ones. We'll go with the power control module here. And also, I'm gonna fast forward through all this, but just so you know, this is not instant. It's gonna look like that on video, but this is gonna take maybe a minute for it to communicate with the computer. All right, so here's a look at our first page. Here's what we have for this car. We can read codes, erase codes. We have live data, active test, and special functions. So just for kicks, let's read the codes here. We got three options. We're not gonna do any on-demand self test, so we're gonna go and uh, retrieve our continuous memory diagnostic trouble codes. All right, so we got two codes. We got a P1000 and P1260. This one is a uh, System readiness test not complete. That's because the battery in this car was changed recently. And this is an engine disabled by PATS passive anti-theft system. This might be related to this. We're not sure, but another helpful feature is that on any of these, you're not sure what's all, what it's about. You can click on help right here. And this is gonna give you a general description of what that system is about, which should come in handy. All right, so let's go back. And next, we're gonna go to the third option which is seeing all the live data pads this has available for this car. All right, here we go. As you can see, this is gonna be quite extensive. Here's the start of the page. This goes all the way down. But I need to mention that not all of these are gonna be applicable to this car. For example, four by four stuff. You know, this car is a real wheel drive. This is not applicable to this. And also, you have double PIDs for some of the sensor data. So, you know, this is not ex gonna be exactly about 150 data PIDs, but it's gonna be at least half of that, which is plenty. So here, we'll just go down the list and you can take a quick look at all the different ones available. You got your EVAP stuff. We got camshaft position sensor. That comes in real handy. Our exhaust gas recirculation valve duty cycle. That's definitely useful when you're trying to diagnose EGR stuff. And a bunch of data pits for our EVAP solenoids and EVAP system in general. And yes, that's another area where this has a huge advantage over your generic OBD2 scan tools. Even if those scan tools have live data capabilities, it's never going to be as extensive as this. And by the way, these are just the data pits available for our PCM. Like if you were to scan our ABS module, for example, we could pick up all the signals for all the different ABS sensors, and the same thing for an HVAC or a transmission control module as well. And of course, most generic OBD2 scanners will not be able to do that. All right, so next, just so you see what these look like, we're gonna pick our uh, long-term fuel trims for each bank, and we're gonna get the live data for these. So we got these two, but then again, if you scroll down, we have uh, same things, just slightly worded differently so we'll just choose them as well we're going to click ok here's what it looks like under the text tab of course car is not running so we don't have any readings yet so next i'll just turn on the engine so you guys can see the live data for bank one and bank two fuel trims all right so here's a look at our uh, fuel trims as you can see we're running very lean but for those of you that are subscribed to my channel you already knew that this car is uh, running lean all right, now let me show you how it looks like under the graph tab as well. So as you can see, we got our long-term fuel trim bank two here, bank one on this side. You also have an option of choosing two graphs, and then you can choose what you want to see in each graph. So I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to open the hood and open the throttle, and you guys are going to be able to see this graph change.
All right, so that's that. But next, uh, let's uh, do a couple more and then we'll move on. So let's go back. So we'll go with our math sensor. I'm not sure why there's two of them, but let's just choose both of them just in case. And then our uh, upstream O2 sensors for each bank. Actually, again, there's two data pits for each. Not sure why. Hit OK. So here we got a voltage reading for our MAP sensor. It's putting out 0.8 volts. I'm going to rev the engine by the throttle plate, see if this goes up. I'll actually switch you guys over to the graph. We'll do the MAP sensor. Yeah, we'll do MAP sensor. Okay, so this one is actually pounds per second. This is by voltage. All right, so there we saw that our MAP sensor was responsive as we opened the throttle, allowed more air to be sucked into the engine and more airflow. Our voltage went up as uh, one would expect. Now let's check our O2 sensors. Okay, so the different data pits, one is looks like we get the voltage. So we'll choose the, the one that gives us a voltage for each O2 sensor. There's bank one, it's bank two. All right, great. So it looks like our O2 sensors are working properly. They're oscillating. You can see exactly how far up it's going on this one. You know, you can get the voltage reading here. And also there's a scale on the side and they're both oscillating between about 0.1 to 0.7 it looks like. Now if you had an O2 sensor that was pegged out, lean or rich, you could just play with the throttle and see whether it was gonna respond to you opening the throttle and closing it rapidly and whatnot. See whether you could get it to move. If you could get it to move, then that would mean that you potentially don't have a bad O2 sensor, but a condition inside your engine that's causing it to run either rich or lean. All right, so let's uh, exit out of here and go check out different uh, options. We'll go to the active test option here. This is where you can uh, control different solenoids and sensors and valves from the scanner right here. All right, this is gonna be fun. So let's try it with our uh, EGR valve duty cycle. Let's click on that. Uh, live data is not needed, not really. Okay, there's a quick explanation of what it does. Click OK. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna to get to increase and decrease the duty cycle for our EGR valve. All right, so we're gonna do this with the engine running. And what we expect is if we have a working EGR valve and a working EGR solenoid, as we open our EGR valve using our scanner, we expect the engine to start running rough. There we go. Hopefully you guys are gonna be able to hear the engine. There, struggling pretty hard. I don't think we're gonna be able to stall it out, but yep, running pretty bad right now. All right, that was too fun. Let's do one more. Let's get out of here. Let's pick an easy one. Let's do the idle air control valve. Yeah. Here we go. We're at 32% right now. And we're gonna increase it, and as we increase it, I expect the RPM to increase as well. There we go. You guys hear it? We're at max. And as if that wasn't enough, with this scanner, you can also do relearns on electronically controlled throttle bodies. You can even program ECMs and TCMs, but all of those are gonna depend on what year, make, and model you have and whether this is compatible to that or not. And again, I don't have that information since I just got this, but if you click on the link in the description box and ask the seller himself, he'll be able to point you in the right direction, I'm sure. That's it, guys. This is a keeper for me, that's for sure. And no, I'm not paid or sponsored by Auto. Not that I'm against getting sponsored. I'm talking to you, Snap-on. All right, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, also share it, and also check out these other related videos of which I put links to on this side of the screen that you can click on. There will also be links in the description box down below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.